obviously you're probably going to get into a lot darker of a mental space. But know that this is totally temporary. This could have been a lot worse. You still have your leg. You still have your life. About the first week in December, I was at the gym and I saw some weird veins on the side of my leg that I hadn't seen before. And I had a kind of a continuous dull pain in my hip and my leg, my quad area. We were out getting ready for Christmas on the 23rd and we were driving, doing our thing. She was like, yeah, this is really feeling uncomfortable. We just started watching my leg minute by minute turn different colors and grow and grow and grow. Her panic was growing. The numbness was growing. The swelling was growing. And that's the point where like, we can't wait anymore. There's something seriously going on. After being admitted to the emergency room, she was diagnosed with a DVT. My major vein in my right leg going up to my abdomen was completely blocked off. There was absolutely no blood flow. I was suddenly no longer this invincible person. I was someone who didn't know if I would be able to have a family one day, you know, have kids. These were all starting to be questions of mine and it was isolating. Say hi, mom. They would be doing thrombolytics to hopefully melt the clot. That was the initial goal. The doctor came in, started explaining the surgery one last time, explaining how they had to place a filter in my chest in case any blood clot you know, decided to break off. And some aha moment told me and reminded me that I have a metal allergy and I can't have a metal filter placed in me. So he abandoned the entire procedure and told her that she would be discharged with the prognosis of a long-term, lifelong disability. For that week, we were counting down the days that we could do something for my clot. After 14 days, the rate of success for treating a clot dramatically decreases. She was silent. She only cried. She was exhausted. She was emotionally completely exhausted. I was like counting down the rest of my life. And every morning that I woke up, I got less and less flexibility in my hip and I got much more disabled. If there is anything that can be done about it, I'm gonna find out what can be done. It was January 1st, a Saturday, an international holiday, and I came across an R. I emailed that night. Not an hour later came an email. One of their reps had said, they do have that in the area, this technology. I was like, this is it. This is it. So 8.30 on New Year's Day, I get a phone call saying that there is a patient that is exploring a more aggressive approach to the management of her daughter's DVT. The symptoms plus the extensive amount of clot burden, it really put a press on us to kind of get this thing handled for her so she could become the person that she was. The first time when I went to his office and he started to speak to us about the whole procedure was the first time I felt some relief. 
we brought her in and we used the clot retriever device, which allows us to essentially core out the clot, and then it's followed by a basket that catches any debris that breaks free. And we were able to, in about eight passes, really establish normal vein patency with almost no residual clot left in the veins. I woke up and I immediately knew. I just looked at my leg and it was the same color as the other leg. Three hours later, I was walking out of the hospital. And that was the best Christmas gift. <laughs> he showed me the picture of my clot that was taken out and that was just like, I mean, <laughs> come on, no wonder why I couldn't walk. It was a, a huge success on kind of getting her back to where she was before the DVT. After the whole blood clot, I couldn't perform in the gym the way I wanted to, and now I'm back in the gym exceeding what I did before. This could have not been a possibility without Dr. Patel and without Anari and Clot Retriever. I am not invincible, and I know that now, but I'm also so much stronger because of it.